It seems that philosophy is the discipline in which all of one's answers are questioned. For this reason, it can be seen as a threat. It can be very threatening the knack philosophy has for bringing to our attention just how little certainty we have. But on the coattails of this realization rides the further realization of just how little certainty we need. How does 4 answer the question, what is 2 plus 2? By being the piece of information that it seeks. One cannot answer the question, what is 2 plus 2, without knowing that this question is answered with the sum of these two figures. One cannot answer the question, what is the capital of Florida, without knowing that the answer to this question is the name of a city in Florida in which is found the office of the state's governor. Before one can answer a question, one must have settled the issue of just what pieces of information serve this purpose. A question seeks a piece of information, or several, and therefore answering the question in question means, means being able to identify which piece. I have heard it said that there is no greater mystery in life than who we truly are. I find myself in agreement for precisely this reason. Before one can answer the question, one must settle the issue of just what information serves this purpose. Just what information does the question, who are you, seek? When someone asks, who are you, the norm is to answer with one's name. Yet, when someone asks, who is Patrick Stewart, something else is called for. And when two people happen to have the same name, this clearly does not make them the same person, the same who. Clearly, who one is, and what one's name is, are fundamentally different issues. And yet, there exist circumstances under which the answer to one question can be used as the answer to the other. There have been times and places in human history in which it has been customary to answer the question, Who are you? with one's name, and a descriptor of the location from whence one hails. I'm McClendon of the Highlands. But of course two people hailing from the same location, who happen to have the same name, have abundant capacity to be fundamentally, profoundly different people. Other times, it has been the custom to answer with one's name and one's profession. Who are you? Deanna Troy, ship's counselor. But this has the same problem. Every one of us has properties, attributes. But some of these play a part in defining one's essence, and some do not. And of those that play this part, with some the part is in defining what one is, while others play a part in defining who. And of course, just as there is bound to be some gap, there is also bound to be overlap. Surely, if a man walks into a barber shop with hair two feet long, and comes out with hair a quarter inch long, he is still the same man, however profound the difference in his appearance. Surely, one does not change one's identity by just shaving. Surely it does not change someone's identity to surgically remove her spleen or her appendix. Surely the act of clipping one's fingernails or toenails, or the act of losing or gaining a few pounds, does not make one a different person. Clearly, the length of one's hair, fingernails and toenails, and one's weight are all properties that play no part in defining one's essence. So what properties do? One's fingerprints, retinal scans, and genetic structure are absolutely unique from one person to the next. So clearly, a change in one of these would indicate a change in one's identity. Yet, when one asks, who are you? We don't exactly need samples of each of these to answer the question. It is possible to know who someone is without sequencing her DNA. I once heard about this man who told his daughter about how much bigger computers were back in the 50s and 60s, all about how instead of being small enough to fit in the palm of the hand, they took up several rooms. She responded by asking how big the keyboards were. Clearly, the mistaken impression she was under was this notion that a keyboard is necessarily part of the essence of a computer, without which it is not in fact a computer. 
What are the defining properties of a god? Hercules, Ra, and Quetzalcoatl are all gods that people have at one time or another believed in. But what are the general properties of Hercules that make him a god, without which he would be something else? And what are the specific properties that make him Hercules, without which he would be someone else? What properties make him what he is, and what properties make him who he is? Are what and who at all interdependent? Can one's who be preserved intact in the event that one's what is fundamentally changed, or vice versa? Who are we? Who are you?